Why do so many Australian property investors stop at just one single investment property? Hi there, Jared Brown here, Australian expat financial planner based here in Singapore. Today we're diving into property investment in Australia. Did you know that there are just over 2 million Australians that are property investors? That means they may or may not own their own home, but they own at least one investment property. But of those 2.05 million Australians that are property investors, 71% of them own just one. So why is this? Why are they stopping at one? Was it that they set out to only ever own one? Or are they getting stuck at one and don't know how to grow from there? they chosen the wrong asset? Where are they making miscalculations or where are they getting that strategy wrong? So in today's video, we're going to dive into the five most common reasons that most Australian property investors stop at just one, even though they might have dreams and ambitions of growing a property portfolio. The first reason that so many property investors in Australia stop at just one is a short term mindset. Far too many Australian property investors sell that property within the first five years. And this is often driven by the fact that they're chasing that quick win. It's been a year, it's been three years, I haven't made any money yet, why isn't it going anywhere? Maybe property is not for me, maybe I should invest that money into shares or crypto or funds or something else. And what we really know is that property takes time. If you're investing in property with an investment horizon of anything less than 10 years, then you should probably be looking at something else. So that's number one, getting rid of that short term mindset when it comes to investing. Number two is poor research. They're either getting the asset right and the area wrong, or they're getting the area right and the asset wrong, or they're getting both of those key ingredients incorrect. Think of it like this, let's take a suburb in Melbourne as a good example that we might all be familiar with, Turak. A great suburb, arguably one of the most uh, premium suburbs in Australia and largely always trades at a premium. But if we compare the performance of two different properties over the last 20 years, let's say a four bedroom, two bathroom house on a 1000 square meter block of land compared to the growth of a one bedroom or studio apartment, which do you think would have delivered a better rate of growth over that time period? Naturally, it's the house by leaps and bounds. The, the same thing is true in different markets as well. So really what you need to be researching and ascertaining is am I buying the right asset in the right area that is meeting the investment criteria I need to be looking at? And if you're unsure how to do this, that's where great property buyers agents can come into play they can be doing that research for you, finding the right asset, designing your brief for you, and of course, crunching the numbers. So that's number two, why so many stop at just one, getting the research wrong, or even worse, not doing any research before diving in. Number three, why so many property investors stop at just one is cash flow, or the actual yield on the property. Many property investors look at it and think, okay, yes, I'm getting $1,000 a week at rent or $500 a week or $2,000 a week, and my mortgage is going to be $2,000 or $3,000 or $1,500, whatever it might be. So one number, take the other. Yes, okay, I can manage that. But then of course, what comes up are council rates and water rates and land tax and the air conditioning breaks or the, the lawn needs mowing or there's pavers that are out of place and crooked and need to be relayed, or the house needs to be repainted, or even just smoke alarms need to be checked. And these things can often catch people by surprise. So it's important to run your numbers correctly, make sure you've got buffers in place and you're not ignoring that yield. Because whilst it might sound great to go and buy a, a house in Point Piper or Turak or Cottesloe in Western Australia, you need to be able to afford to hold that property to allow the compounding returns to actually work over time. Number four, why so many property investors fail and stop at just one is poor diversification. We hear this one time and time again where 
Far too often, people think they're gonna buy in their local area because that's what they know well. And somehow this is going to impact the long-term growth of that market, which nine times out of 10 is a foolish approach. So con consider this example. You own your own home and your home happens to be, let's say in, uh, in Melville in Western Australia. So you're gonna go and buy an investment property in Melville because you know that area well, and then we're gonna go and buy another investment property also in Melville. So if Melville, if Melville doesn't go anywhere for the next 10 years and is flat, and I'm not suggesting that it will go up, down or sideways, of course, do your own research. But if it goes nowhere, then we are copying that lack of growth on a compounded or leveraged basis because we borrowed money to go and buy multiple properties in that area. So when it comes to investing in property in Australia, it's important to realize that every state and territory is its own market driven by different macroeconomic factors. And that is why it's so important to understand what you're buying into and what factors are really going to drive that long-term performance. We also need to think about things like land tax, because if you own multiple investment properties or have a large enough exposure to land in one state or territory, and you've not given enough thought to the ownership structure, that land tax bill could also start to bite. So don't ignore diversification because that is what is going to allow you to really continue to hold those properties over the long run. So that's number four. And of course, number five is buying for the wrong reason. Now, this might be because, you know, little Johnny is going down to school in Australia. So we're going to buy a studio apartment for little Johnny because that'll be convenient for him. And, and we'll rent it out once Johnny's finished with university or finished with school. But the trouble with that is that studio apartment is probably going to go nowhere and might even actually go backwards in terms of value over time. Because the majority of Australian homeowners don't want to live in that studio apartment. They want something with a bit of space in a nice area with a good walk score and all of those other variables. It might also be the case that you're simply chasing high yield or a positively geared property in an environment where interest rates are much higher than long-term averages. So if you had a positively geared property in today's market, chances are you're going to be foregoing quite a bit of capital growth because that yield is going to be unusually high. Now, you might also be buying simply because your friends told you to, or they think it's a good idea, or your colleagues doing something. But if that doesn't align with your own strategy, then it really is pointless and isn't going to allow you to achieve your long-term goals. What you really need to think about and really need to consider is how investing in that property or that property portfolio is going to allow you to achieve your own financial goals. Whether that be financial independence, or growing assets for the children or the grandchildren one day, or just simply amassing an empire, whatever it may be, make sure that those transactions and those decisions are aligned with your own goals. So there you have it, five simple reasons why nearly three quarters of Australian property investors stop at just one and how you can avoid them to make sure that you can continue to expand your own property portfolio. If you have any questions at all, drop me a note in the comments or feel free to contact me directly. Do remember to like, subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.